Hey guys, Hell's First here, and we're going to talk some more today about Core Punk, one of the greatest MMOs ever to be made, coming here soon, the closed beta. Sounds like it's going to be at the end of May, and I cannot tell you how excited I am for this game. Now, I made a video just a couple days ago talking about just how excited I was about the game and why I was excited about the game, but there's a lot of questions that I see people asking on Reddit, on Discord, on Facebook, trying to figure out exactly how the system works. So today, I wanted to take a minute and address some of these things with you guys. So, let's get into it real quick. So what you're seeing in the background right now is the alpha gameplay, 15 minutes of it. We've all got access to it. You've seen it on YouTube, I'm sure, already. But a lot of people were asking questions about the branches and the talent tree system. So Irene, one of the uh, head people over there at Core Punk, wanted to go ahead and explain some of it. So on their way to reaching the level 40 cap, a player who can have any three active branches of passive talents from nine possible talent branches. And that means that say you pick a mercenary, right? Now you have three different branches to choose from, essentially the subclasses, right? So let's say you choose the sniper. Out of all three, you choose the sniper, and you want to use that as your first starting subtree that you can use, the branch, so to say, the active branch you're going to use. And now you have the ability to level a weapon spec for that branch, in which case a sniper would obviously be his rifle. So you're going to level up the weapon spec and you can do this in any way you see fit. You just have to follow the order of the actual path that's laid in front of you. But no matter what, you will end at the end having 100% of everything in that spec talent build completed. There'll be no spots for you left to click on. Everything will be active. And the reason they do it this way is so when leveling up the character and that branch all the way up to 40, you have the ability to do it in different ways than everybody else. So it's not just this, hey, this guy did it this way, so I'm gonna do it this way. No, you, you're all gonna get the same in the very end, but it just allows you to do it your own way on the way up there. Then you have nine possible talent branches. Now what I mean by these nine talent branches is they're literally the skill trees what you're gonna use when doing all of this. So looking at the skill tree, you've got literally a couple things to pay attention to. You can either do the warrior, the mage, the defender, the hunter, the assassin, the medic, support, pathfinder, or the looter. And every single one of these has an attribute that goes along with it for a passive ability. For instance, the warrior is 10% attack power, the mage is 10% spell power, the defender is 15% extra health, the hunter is 15% attack speed, the assassin is 5% physical critical chance, the medic is 15% outgoing heal, the support is 10% ability cooldown, and the pathfinder is 10% mana slash energy regeneration, and the looter is plus 10% gold. So, a lot of that sounds familiar from a lot of other games you've played, whether it be Diablo, World of Warcraft, Ultima Online, EverQuest, all these, they should ring a bell for a passive ability to be put into play. So you have the ability to pick three of these, any three you want, to go ahead and put it on your character. So if you're a sniper and you decide, okay, you know what? I also want more attack out of each blast. You're gonna pick the warrior skill tree. Now you're gonna go through this talent skill tree and you can level it up, but you only have 18 spots to put everything into. So you won't be able to use the entire tree, just 18 spots of said tree. Now on top of this, because that's how that'll work, you have the ability to do two more trees. In the trailer you see he has two of them unlocked and one of them is locked. And he's at level 26 mastery from which we can deduce from everything else they show you. This means, hopefully, you get the second one at level 20, you get the third one unlocked at level 30. And then you can level one of these up however you want 
And then you can go to an NPC to say, you know what? I no longer want the warrior one on there. I'm gonna replace it with the hunter for faster attack speed, right? 15% attack speed and whatever comes on that skill tree. And this will allow you to be able to do whatever you want. However, once you go to the hunter, you have to level that tree up again. So it starts from scratch, which is fine because you're going to want to do that anyway, so you understand exactly what you're putting the points into. If you just had the ability to switch to something you didn't know anything about, it'd kind of not be as much fun as figuring it out as you go. Of course, there'll be guides online, I'm sure, within the first month, but this will ensure you the ability to learn it as you go. And then some of you might be saying, well, what the fuck, man? What's going to happen to the warrior that I fully got through all 18 points put into it? Well, don't worry, those 18 points will still be there. If you want to switch back to the warrior, talking to the same NPC, you can do that. You can put that back on. So the goal, of course, for me would be to completely go over every single one of these. Now, if you chose the mercenary as your hero and you went the sniper route, you could still do the other two branches. You could do both of them. It wouldn't have any detrimental effect whatsoever. So going in to looking at the other mercenary stats, right? Or the other mercenary classes, right? You've got the sniper, the engineer, and the berserker. Obviously, sniper being your ranged character, and the engineer is gonna be your close range uh, technical master, you know, of course. And then you've got the berserker, which is just going to be an all out powerhouse that grows rage with each strike and does additional damage to everything in their path. They're just gonna slaughter, right? You can unlock both of those and level them up, but it's all gonna be based on how much you've completed of the first one. So if you complete the sniper, then you can start the berserker. If you complete the berserker, then you can start the engineer and you can switch back between the three of them however you see fit at that time. And then on top of that, you literally can put nine talents on any of those branches. It's, it's amazing. So this is how the system works. And Irene and a couple guys on the Discord completely explained it to me and I asked every question I could possibly ask. And this is what it comes out to, which is amazing to say the least. You've seen systems where your talent trees are on the actual hero, on the actual class. This is completely different because everybody's hero is going to be the same. Everyone's sniper, exact same because they're all going to be maxed. Everybody's engineer, exact same because it's all going to be maxed. You know, they're all, they're all going to be the same no matter what. But then it's the nine talent trees at the end that you mix and match and however you see fit to turn that character in to your personal, completely customly built badass to slaughter. And I'm sure there's gonna be builds that are better for PVE and they're gonna be builds that are better for PVP. It's gonna be, the game is blowing my mind. It hasn't even come out yet and it's blowing my mind. It's one of the greatest sounding games of all time. So I hope this helps you understand just a little bit better how the skills and the talent trees are all going to work in the game. And if you guys like the video, please throw me a subscribe, help me out, help build the channel so I can continue to bring you more news on Core Punk, the greatest game to ever be announced. As always, I'm Hell's First, and until next time, ta-ta.